Welcome to Bosch's Virtual Training Labs, IVA 3.5, Module 3, Configuration Menu, Calibration. After accessing your IVA wizard, the first and most important task that you're going to perform is to calibrate either your camera or your encoder to what your camera actually sees. This is a critical task if you're going to perform intelligent video analysis based on object size or speed. To access the configuration menu, simply select the configuration tab in the IVA wizard. This will take you to the configuration area where we can start a calibration. Unlike other analysis products on the market, Bosch's IVA 3.5 is an intelligent algorithm that is embedded inside the encoder or the camera. There is no need to hang a camera at a specific height or a specific down angle because we're going to tell the encoder what the camera is actually looking at. There are two ways to perform calibration. The first of which is a graphical grid tool on the left which will be covered later in this module or you can manually enter your numbers if you know your exact tilt angle, roll angle, and elevation of your camera. The first setting we're going to discuss though is, is camera constant. Camera constant determines the basic settings for calibration. This is used to compensate distortions in perspective from the combination of image sensor and lenses. The default value here is 1000. Why are these settings so important? For your encoder to be able to determine size and speed, it needs to know the perspective at which it's looking at. Here you'll see two children who are the exact same height, but because of the anomaly of the room that they're in, one looks smaller and one looks larger. To calculate camera constant, the equation is camera constant equals focal length of your lens in millimeters divided by pixel pitch in millimeters times 4. Focal length is a very attainable number. If you have a 6 millimeter lens, it's 6 millimeters. Pixel pitch is obtained by dividing the image sensor size by the number of pixels. For the example in this module, we're going to use a 596 pixel sensor. You will notice in this chart of standard sensor sizes, half inch, one third, and quarter inch, that it gives the width in millimeters of what the actual sensor size is. For this practice equation, we're going to use the one third inch sensor. So if we do 4.96 millimeters divided by 596, that gives us 0 0.0083 millimeters. Now to determine our actual pixel pitch, let's go back to our original equation. Our camera constant is going to be a 12 millimeter lens divided by 0 0.0083 millimeters times 4. That's going to give us a camera constant of 361. So on our right hand side we're going to have to manually enter 361 in the camera constant area. The next thing I want to talk about is cube size. In the last portion of this module we're going to be working with a 3D calibration tool. It consists of a blue grid which is adjustable and two red cubes. These two red cubes are representative of your foreground and your background. The best way to determine cube size is to find something in your camera shot that is a known specific height. Type it in here and next we're going to go over how to use the graphical tool. The first thing I want you to notice in the default position, the graphical tool's tilt angle is 90 degrees. That is representative of the camera looking straight down at the ground. You will also notice that there are yellow dots and blue dots. These are called anchor points. And it's from these dots that you can adjust your actual graphical tool. Different anchor points perform different tasks. The first trick we want to talk about is actually aligning our grid with a known line that our camera's looking at. So here we're going to take, I'm going to click and hold and drag down on my back blue line and we're going to tilt our whole grid down to where we're almost parallel with what we're looking at. If I use my back yellow anchor point, I can take and slowly twist my whole grid to where it's lined up with the known line. Now you also notice that I can move my foreground cube and my background cube back out to something that I know what size it is. You will notice if I change the size of my background or my foreground cube, they will both change sizes because they're prospectively linked. My front right anchor point is a trapezoid effect. My middle anchor point will move the entire grid and all the cubes with it. My blue anchor point will actually just resize my entire grid. Now as I stated before, the trick is, is to line up your grid with a known line in the shot. So right here we're going to line it up with a crosswalk. All I have to do now is hit apply and I should be calibrated. This concludes this module. Thank you.